Gene regulation can occur at many different levels. So it can occur right at the beginning in the activation of the gene in the DNA, in the genome, through synthesis of the RNA, through its splicing, through export from the nucleus, through translation in the cytoplasm, through degradation of the RNA. All of these steps can be regulated, and in fact, most of them are under different circumstances. Gene regulation is the way that different genes are turned on and off in different cells to give us different cells, different organs, and ultimately, different organisms. So the way we used to think about RNA was as the middleman between DNA and protein. You've got DNA, which encodes the genes, carries all the information that gets passed down from generation to generation. And proteins, of course, are what makes up most of our cells and, and body. The, the hair cell, the hair, the skin cells, bone, et cetera, et cetera, is made up of proteins. And so RNA had this uh, reputation as being the, the in-between of those two things. And in fact, what we know now is that RNA was probably the original molecule of life, this idea that uh, the original uh, replicating chemical entity might have actually been made up of RNA. RNA can do base pairing the same way DNA can, and so you can get replication. Um, but RNA also can fold up and into interesting three-dimensional molecules the same way that proteins can, and so it can act as an enzyme to catalyze chemical reactions that are necessary for life. The question then is, why do we have DNA in the nucleus? And the answer under that scenario would be that, that DNA is a good storage molecule. It's much more stable than RNA. And then, in fact, it usurped RNA at some point in evolution as the information molecule and then left RNA uh, in at least until, uh, until a few years ago in this paltry informational role. But now we're beginning to appreciate that, in fact, RNA may be much more central to the metabolism of the cell and regulation of the cell than we previously thought. Our view of the genome is, is changing and uh, changing very quickly. Uh, it, uh, for a long time it was seen uh, as, a, as a kind of desert of evolutionary junk uh, with the occasional island of protein coding sequences. But now our view is changing and, and not everybody agrees with this and not everybody's even aware of this change but it is changing quickly uh, to a view of that the genome is really a, an extremely sophisticated information suite and that most of the information being transacted by the genome is being transacted through RNA regulatory networks which set the settings for the control of growth and development in multicellular organisms. The story is how you integrate all of this new information, how proteins work and RNAs work in the context of each other. Clearly, transcriptional regulatory systems must be integrated. And so I think the critical question is how? If you think about a human, uh, we have roughly 100 trillion cells in a very, very precise uh, arrangement. You know, all of the, the dozens of muscles in your face that create the range of human expressions, the, the bones in the finger and the brain. And the information for programming the ontogeny and functioning of this has to lie somewhere. We have the same number of protein coding genes, many of which are uh, 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 equivalent between us and a, a simple nematode worm that only has 1,000 cells. So go figure. You had information in DNA, that information got transferred to an RNA intermediate, and that RNA information got translated into protein. And of course that's still true, but now we know that the information is flowing in much more interesting ways in that there's information flowing in both directions. Uh, the information can flow also from the RNA back to the, to the DNA. And so I think uh, we have to think of the, of the genome as um, not just a central information repository, but something that's interacting constantly with its environment, and many of those interactions are going to be carried out by RNA. And it looks very much like evolution discovered through the use of RNA, the power of digital communication and control systems a billion years before we did. Now, microRNAs um, are small RNA molecules of roughly 22 nucleotides in length. They have no catalytic activity whatsoever, as far as we know. What they do is recognize a target sequence in another RNA, usually a messenger RNA, and a target that messenger RNA thereby for, uh, to inhibit its translation and perhaps to uh, its destruction. And that is mediated by a generic protein complex called a risk complex. So 
you can dial up regulatory circuits but simply by producing a different microRNA. You don't have to reproduce an entire infrastructure. The infrastructure is generic. So this is what I mean by digital control system. I don't mean in this context on off, but rather a very compact sequence specific string that conveys information to a target which then recruits the appropriate infrastructure to uh, convert that message back into an analog action. Now if you think about it, exactly the same thing happens when you order a DVD online. You send digital signals, uh, the product code and your credit card number, which whiz over the wires uh, or optical fibers and then at the end of the line somebody uh, interprets that message and puts a DVD in a bag and posts it to you. So the information transfer is far more efficient, far more flexible and, and, and far more malleable in an evolutionary context, context. I think we'll see in the future an increasing role for RNA in gene regulation. I think we'll see expansion of the systems we know about. But more excitingly, we're going to discover new systems that I'm sure of, that are RNA-based. We're just realizing that we've only got to first base and we have a long way to go and most of the journey forward is going to be uh, dissecting, analyzing and, and rebuilding an understanding of these massively parallel and extremely sophisticated RNA regulatory circuits which really do underpin our complexity. And the irony, I think, is that what was dismissed as junk because it wasn't understood will turn out to hold the secret of human complexity, including our cognitive complexity. And that's where we're going over the next 10 to 50 years. Science is published by AAAS, the Science Society.